I would like to talk to you about how to bring a WAV file, or a song, into the timeline in Camelot, essentially as a backing. I believe we haven't done that yet. I have shown you before that I have it and what you can generally do with it, but I would like to do the integration with you now. For this, we will first create a new song here, so we click on song down here, and simply choose from scratch, naming it test, Backing, press the proceed button, and now it is here. If we go into the timeline now, this timeline is empty. I had already explained the difference between the backing tracks timeline, the scene timeline, and the markers timeline. Now let's just get started by clicking here on the plus sign at the back of backing track, and then we can see where the audio file is located. I will now click here on my audio files. Here we can see that I have a few things in there. This is actually from another project, and I would just take flowers here. That is indeed flowers. Sometimes that is indeed flowers. Sometimes that is simply flow. And here we are just taking these individual tracks. That is Ain't Nobody. So first I will click here on the E-Piano, Drums, Bass. And you can click on the rest all at the same time. Just click on them and they will be selected. Here at the three dots you can decide what to do with it. So we can choose Virtual Wave, Rename File, or Delete. Then we click on Add Select. And then you can set here where to insert it. We want to have it at the start now. Just click on Done. And now it will insert it for the first time. So here we see all the tracks. Now I would like to change the volume back here. Exactly. All the tracks. Now we can first change the volume back here. Right next to it, we can mute the track, and below that, we can solo it. So, headphones mean solo, and you can also see when it is muted by the color. Then we can see here, although it's not very clear now, when I check main audio out, meaning really on what is written, I can select a different output here. I had prepared that the RME interface is connected, and then I can place the items on different outputs. This makes sense if, for example, you want to route the click to a different output signal, or create an in-ear monitoring mix, which I also intended to do here. So I wanted to mix my in-ear monitoring through Camelot. Now I can easily adjust that. I can route each of these tracks. What else can you do? You can now click on this arrow down here, for example, to specify how much it plays. Of course, I have dragged it quite far. Let me jump forward. You see, or rather you hear, that you can basically set the point from when the thing really starts. I can let it come in with a delay. I can do the same here at the back with the ending. Then we also have the point at the top, which can be dragged. You can create a fade in. Let me come down. And here I have the marker timeline. If I click on the no, differently. If I click on the pencil icon at the top under backing tracks, I can change the spools again, adjust the colors, and I can also move the whole thing a bit smaller. Change it to make it even smaller. Of course, you don't have to do that. Now let's go down here to Marker Timeline and click on Plus. And then I can place a marker in there. Specifically, I can place a marker with automation in there. You can execute certain commands with that. We will do that in another video. However, you can also place a play marker and a stop marker in there. I will just add a label marker here, which is also marked. I'll just name it Era 1. Then click on Next. Now let's place it here after 5 seconds. I will just add a second one. Call it 02. That's obviously very clever, right? Now click on Next. And let's move it to about 40. Now we click on the front. And when I press play now, it starts running. Now it goes over the first marker, and if I click back here, it jumps to the next marker. You didn't see that just now, but clicking here at the back jumps to the next marker. And when you click back, it jumps back to the marker. This allows you to really jump over certain things in a very cool way. This means you could skip parts, jump back, or simply set safety markers so that you can shift the beat, for example, if the singer has entered poorly or incorrectly. It's very, very simple. So these are the backing tracks for this particular song. If I switch the song here now, for example, to turn back time, copy, then go to the timeline and there is nothing left. So basically, everything is gone. Here, one can see the difference between song, scene, and set list track in the layers. In this case, the song is the backing track in the timeline. So everything is always included. And you can define different scenes in a song. And so you can do the same with the backing tracks. This means they are not present in every scene, but only in part of the scene. What you have just seen is how incredibly easy it is to get backing tracks in here. It is really, truly, unbelievably simple. You can also easily set markers. 
which puts you in a very, very good position.